the uh, joy that comes in the morning often is mistaken for people that wake up and naturally have a, a happy oh positive attitude and waking up and sometimes you think that if you don't wake up feeling 100 percent joy 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 that you're somehow wrong no god knows you the way you are he understands you as you approach each day the point that god was making when he says that sorrow endures for but an evening but joy comes in the morning is that there's the opportunity for a newness of life for a refreshing baptism as it were in the sunshine and in the light of his presence that when you see a sunrise it gives you hope that today will be a better day so if you don't wake up feeling all effervescent that's okay too <laughs> god knows you and he just wants to bless you with himself the fruit of the spirit is faith by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Without faith it is impossible to please him. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believes not is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Lord, I believe, help thou my unbelief. Whoso keepeth his word, in him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. Faith worketh by love. Faith without works is dead. We walk by faith, not by sight. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Whom, having not seen, you love, in whom, though you see him not, yet believing, you rejoice with joy unspeakable, and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. The salvation that God provided was one of relationship with him, is that when Jesus died, he removed that which was stopping us from knowing God prior to his atoning as we say or his paying the price for our sin atonement sacrifice on the cross knowing god was always a distant relationship it was something that was far away that always had to be somehow intervened between a holy person or someone that has been imputed with holiness or a covering put over them and god they were distant and they communicated by intermediary but when Jesus died on the cross, then he provided a way that you could know God the Father intimately, personally, and come directly to him without there being any type of necessary ritual or regimen or person, you know, to intervene on behalf of you. And so Jesus provided that and he abides with that, seated at the right hand of the Father, speaking to him on your behalf, as well as you being able to approach God yourself. That salvation is appropriated or we are made a part of it we become a part of it by faith in knowing that Jesus died for our sins when we know that when we make that a part of our life and recognize the sacrifice that Jesus made then it is imputed to us his righteousness it is given over to us that we would be in God's eyes made acceptable to approach him the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. Like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. He will ever be mindful of his covenant. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. As an eagle stirs up her nest, fluttereth over her young, spreadeth abroad her wings, taketh them and bear them on her wings, so the Lord alone did lead him, and there was not a strange God with him. His compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. 
Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion toward them, and he healed their sick. The same yesterday and today and forever. The very hairs of your head are all numbered. Are not two sparrows sold for a farthing? And one of them shall not fall on the ground without your father? Fear ye not, therefore. God is so intimately detailed that he's aware of every circumstance, nuance, inflection, attitude, action, direction, all that encompasses what we call life and living in this world, God is more than aware of and has taken every step and every detail into consideration when he speaks to you and tells you that you can trust him for one reason, because God, God our Father, God who gave his only begotten Son, God who has created the universe, God who took six days and then on the seventh day rested, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God who sees all, knows all, and hears all, loves you. God is love. He is compassionate. And a lot of times people forget and mistake some of the actions that have happened in reading about God and don't understand how he can be compassionate and still be loving. The reality is when you know God and you begin to relate to him and communicate, he can explain to you personally anything you might not understand about him being love and how his actions are love-based. They are compassionate. They do act and react according to a loving relationship that God has for his creation. And he always does what he chooses according to his own will, but he's determined because of his son that the whole world should come to a salvation through Jesus to be made brand new, to be made restored from corruption that is in you, that is killing you, that is causing you to be less than what God intended for you to be. It's not just that he wants the best for you, because that's not true. What he wants is himself for you, because God is good and nothing else is. So when God is in you, then you are good. And today, reach out. Ask him. Let him lead the way. He will. <laughs>